We'll now take a look at complex numbers. Complex numbers are extremely useful in engineering and science as a way of handling problems that involve trigonometry. This is because we can take advantage of geometrical interpretations and the adding of vectors and arrows to simplify the mathematics required to handle things that involve sines and cosines. So the first thing is to review what you should have had in previous math courses on complex numbers. A complex number has both a real and an imaginary part. So as an example, let's take the imaginary number z is equal to 3 plus 2i, where i squared is minus 1. This part right here is the real part, and this part right there is the imaginary part. Now, one can plot such a point on an axis where there is a real axis along x and an imaginary part is plotted on y. And if one does that, then one could go one, two, three units along the real part and one, two units on the imaginary part. And this point here, whose coordinates are three, two, is in fact the number z. Now this is known as the Cartesian type of representation or the standard form. And it looks an awful lot like the Cartesian form of a vector. Except instead of saying i hat, j hat, there is a real part along x and this i acts like j hat saying go along the y. For that reason it may not surprise you that one can also treat this like it's an arrow in which it has a magnitude and angle. And I'll get back to that in a minute. So, a complex number is plotted in a two-dimensional space with a real part and imaginary part. And it requires two numbers, the real value, that three in this case, and the imaginary part, which is two. Now, normally we deal with just real numbers, but we're gonna find out that these complex numbers come in what are called conjugate pairs. That is, you can get the number plus its conjugate. Let me show you what a conjugate is. Now, conjugates are written in different ways, in different places, but generally, in most books, they write a conjugate like this. And the conjugate has the same real part as the number, in this case, 3, but it has the negative of the imaginary part, in this case, minus 2i. So if you were to draw the conjugate, I mean, I would have 1, 2 going down, and there would be a point here, and that would be z star. So the conjugate would be an arrow with the same x part, that is the real part, but it would have the negative of the y part. All right. Let's move on to some other ways of looking at this thing. For instance, how to add complex numbers. Well, it turns out to add complex numbers, we're just going to add up arrows, just like we did with vectors. So this is very convenient when they're in this form, just as the Cartesian form of a vector is very convenient for adding vectors. The standard form is very convenient for adding complex numbers. So given that complex number a is 3 plus 2i and b is minus 4 plus 3i, what is a plus b and what is a minus b? All right, so the solution to this, which hopefully you've done previously, is that a plus b is 3 plus 2i, notice it doesn't matter whether you put the i in front or the 2 in front, plus minus 4 plus 3i, and just, oops, sorry about that, and just like vectors, the real parts add together, and the imaginary parts add together. So this is 3 minus 4, and in the i parts, it's 2 plus 3, so the answer is minus 1 plus 5i. So that's the answer to the addition.
and a minus b would be 3 plus 2i minus a minus 4 plus 3i oops keep wanting to write vectors here a minus b is 3 plus 4 plus i to minus 3 and this answer is 7 and then minus i so let's draw pictures of that the first one I have 3 plus 2i so it's something like this so that's a and then the second thing we're doing is we're going to add b but b goes back like this if I've done this right uh, not quite done it right let me draw a little better it's supposed to go up a little more than I drew it so that's B and then the sum of the two produces an arrow who goes minus one and goes up five units that's what you get here if you were to subtract B then we would of course draw it in the opposite direction this would be minus B and so whereas the red here was a plus b the green arrow here which would go from here out would be a minus b so just like any vectors this is the way you had complex numbers now like i said a number can also be written in a form similar to polar where you have this length and an angle so we want to write this now with some magnitude, call it the magnitude of Z, and with some angle here where this is real, and this is the imaginary axis. Well, when you do that, a number that's written like that is written in this form. The length, and then this very unusual, which I'll explain in a minute, complex number that's e to the i theta and this theta which is the angle has to be written in radians nothing else is correct so as an example 3 plus 4 i let's say that's the complex number z the magnitude of that is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared and that's equal to 5. The tangent of the angle is equal to 4 thirds. We'd punch that in a calculator and get whatever that value is, but we would need it in radians. And then we would write this number as 5e to the i and then whatever this angle is, which I'm not going to compute here. So as examples, uh, Z1 might be 3 e to the i pi over 2. That particular one would be 3 units i, and this angle here would be pi over 2. So, notice it's a length and an angle. This is the so called Euler form, E U L E R, after the famous mathematician and physicist. Now, a complex exponential function in Euler's form is directly related to the sines and cosines by the following fact. e to the i theta is the cosine of theta plus i sine theta. This is known as Euler form for this particular thing. And let me show you what that says. It says that this is an arrow whose length is 1. This is the angle theta. This sign over here is the sine of theta. This is the cosine of theta. This is real. But the sine is along the imaginary part. That's how come it gets the i. Now, how can I prove that this is in fact the case? 
and that this thing represents this arrow. Well, I can do that taking advantage of some other math that we're supposed to know, and I will do that in the next video.